All right, we are going to take a full teardown look at the KRG Bravo today. I took apart this thing all the way. Every bolt, every nut, everything I took out of it to make sure we could get some good video of what is going on inside of this thing. If you have any questions, put it down below. Check me out on Instagram and let me know if you got any other things you want to see a full teardown of. Take a deeper dive on something. So uh, we'll have some other videos here coming out shortly, but look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. All right, this is the KRG Bravo broken down into all of its parts, including all of the nuts and bolts that goes together there. So do a quick do a quick overview of everything, uh, take a closer look at it, and then put it back together. All right. All right, so this is the backbone of the whole thing. Uh, this is the inner parts of the chassis. As you can see, your action is gonna sit right here, and then this is for the right hand, so you got the bolt cut out there. So uh, let's get a little bit better look at it. Basically, uh, looks like a piece of extruded aluminum with a bunch of cutouts made. So they have their T-slot system, uh, down here that you can add internal weights to it and then they got plenty of ways to attach the the handguard so we got that guy there and then this is the handguard that attaches onto about like that uh, but it's injection molded plastic and then there are bolts or nuts placed inside here and then those correspond with these uh, threaded portions in the chassis itself. A couple different companies make aftermarket versions uh, out of aluminum and allow you to attach arc or rail directly to it. And you can just replace this whole piece. They're about 350 bucks or there's a version from KRG that's about $180. So it's kind of tough to decide to put another $180 into a $300 chassis or put even more money into it. So that would just be a personal preference if you want to do that. Or you can also just add this Arca rail um, to the existing chassis for about 70 or 80 bucks. So it's a little bit cheaper. I'm leaning towards wanting to be able to have it all in one place instead of having to add a rail onto it. But um, plenty of mounting locations that they give you for different different parts of their system to attach that. So that guy basically is just gonna screw down to a couple different locations on the handguard here. Or the forend. So here's your trigger guard and mag holder. So it's a polymer, it's got brass and then a steel uh, spacer. So when you put this all together, which we'll do in a bit, it'll, it won't crush. Um, but then this guy is removable. So if you wanted to upgrade that, it would definitely be possible. Or if you wanted to take it off, you would just have a little smaller mag release but this does make it nice to be able to get to it from either side so this is the bravo butt stock um, i had a friend ask me what this was made out of um, he was thinking about making a wooden version of the butt stock for the bravo and he was wondering if there is aluminum inside of it or anything but from the best that i can tell it is just all injection molded polymer with these brass inserts uh, and then some it looks like a steel steel sleeve there as well um, so pretty pretty just plastic 
Um, they do make different weights that are going to fit in the grip here and then also they have a toolless length of pole adjustment and then they have a couple different options for the butt stock. So comes with this polymer piece that's going to make it a sloped here on the back and then you can also take that out and they have another piece that they have for sale that would put a, a hook in the butt. And then also they have a flat bag rider as an option. And I've been running this for a little bit. And I'm going to probably take it off, try it without it for a little bit, see if I notice a difference in terms of shootability and all that. But um, I've been running that because I wanted to try it out. So, and they're like 10 bucks, so pretty in, pretty inexpensive. So the butt stock here from KRG, very grippy. Um, and then you'll see that there's a hole in there. And I decided to go with the toolless butt plate adjustment here. So it's just got a, a wheel here that fits. Let me see if I can get that nut attached there. But we'll spin that. And I didn't quite get it. So I'll work on that in a little bit. But that nut is just going to attach onto there and that allows you to adjust the butt stock up down left right right there all right and then we also have the cheek riser here pretty basic injection molded plastic with a couple rails that fit right in here there's a space or a washer there and then the bolt or yeah the the bolt here just clamps down on the two so this thing is super solid um, you could probably add some spacers if you wanted to keep a consistent cheek riser but it's just gonna slide in like that and then lock down really nice so um, we're gonna put the buttstock back together and then we'll work on the forend so uh, we've got the cheek piece already in there but we're gonna flip this guy over there is a little, couple little tabs here on the hook cover that go into there. And then this piece simply fits in right there. And KRG always sends a lot of different bolts. So I have um, a bunch, bunch of bolts from the original kit that uh, do different lengths for different um, different types of accessories that it comes with but we're gonna go ahead and get that attached these are a little tough to get into place but basically this guy slips into into the stock like that and then your bolt comes in here and the the second one is a lot harder to get to, but uh, we'll just put the one in for now. We'll go ahead and crank that all the way down. And then we'll get this butt stock back together here. So there are two bolts. Yeah, there are two bolts that you can get to through the holes in the stock there. So if I can't manage to get the bolt to line up properly, I'll have to back it off a little bit and then can simply attach. Um, you can see it's a little narrower at the bottom. About this toolless system is you can quickly and easily transfer around. So when I'm shooting prone, I will typically loosen that up a little bit and then it'll allow me to slide up like that. Go a little bit looser, but you can go up high. So that recoil is coming straight back and into your shoulder a little better. Then if you're shooting prone or uh, shooting shooting bag or uh, shooting off of barricades you can move that guy down or you can simply 
Oop. I need to put a little arrow on there so it reminds me which way is tight. But all right, so we're all back together on the butt stock. Let's go ahead and work on the fore end. So again, that fore end, uh, we're gonna have six screws that are gonna attach at these locations. The if you're putting this back together. You want to remember that the rear or the front action screw, this guy here, is actually captured in the chassis. So you want to go there, and then this plastic uh, hole, the hole right here, um, is going to allow you to get your bolt in there. Oh, sorry, it'd be that hole there. So that'll allow you to get your action screw tighten, tighten there. So, uh, which we'll talk about, you need a very long, um, long bit in order to get that to seat properly, but we'll uh, keep moving here. So these longer bolts here, oh, before I do that, let me remember to add or make sure that I have all of the nuts that I need in here. So I need, let's see here, which ones do I need to add properly? So I'm gonna add two more here in the fore end. They just drop in and now I've got, oop. so there we go. And I think you could add more but I've just been running six in them and I really haven't had an issue with, with them at all. So, oh, unless of course you can't get them to stay seated <laughs> when, when they're in here. So go ahead and push those in a little bit harder. All right, there we go. All right. I'm gonna make sure we're lined up properly. There we go. All right, and then these bolts here, you can see they're, um, they got a very specific cutout. And we're gonna adjust that, there we go. Now those guys will go in there. pack starts so and you could definitely torque these down if you wanted to uh, with a fix it sticks or whatever but there we go and then there's a little cutout here that goes right like that so if you did have screws or anything you'd be good to go and then these are the short ones so just to remember where I put those Right, there we go. We can always go back and tighten these down at any time. So that's back on there. There are some M-lock slots here. So if you wanted to do a few other things, um, you could definitely do that. All right, and that guy is rattling. So that's, that bolt is not supposed to rattle until we get the chassis done. So let's go ahead and pull this in. So this whole thing is held in by two bolts. So you got the one bolt here, and then you're also gonna have the action screw, which comes through the bottom metal, or your trigger guard here, and then up into your action. But uh, all you do, slide this down, and then you're gonna see right here, we've got a short, and stout bolt. Let me see if I can find it real quick. All right, here we go. Don't forget that little washer that goes in there as well. And then this bolt here is a little thicker than the other ones because it's holding a little bit more load than the other, the other bolts on here. So that is one thing you need to know with your 
fix it sticks is to make sure that you have or whatever tools you have with you out in the field that you need two different sizes in order to in order to get this tight so gonna tighten that down again you can go back and clean that up later uh, but basically uh, we got that together oh I always forget these two so um, there are a couple longer bolts these guys and they actually go right next to right next to this and then we're gonna give it a little hit it with the impact here there we go so and then before we finish that up we'll go ahead and put the plug for the grip here put that back in as well all right so now that we got that we have two screws that we need to worry about. So this one here, I'm gonna flip the action over. As you can see, we have a little bolt here. Let me turn that off. All right, so we do have bolt that goes right here and that's going to hold the trigger guard in place all right so we got that and then you can flip it back over and we can put in the action screw Assuming we got everything lined up properly, which we should. I'm going to loosen this up a little bit. So. Right. so, looks like we might have to adjust this just a little bit to make it Make it decide it wants to work. Let's go ahead and back this one out. All right, so there we go. We got that action screw in, and then we'll tighten this back down. our Bravo back up and running and we're ready to put the action back into into the stock there so there's a full breakdown of the Bravo here I did add a few uh, touch points so I got a little traction tape here and then also there is a, a sharp point right here on the action or on the, the stock that really digs into my finger so I went ahead and put some traction tape in there seems to make it a lot better so all right so that is the krg bravo if you have any questions about it just put it down below and i'll get back to you if you need some closer stuff go ahead and head over to my instagram hit me up with some questions love to talk to you guys thanks